In this video, we'll be talking about all the mistakes I made in my data science journey that eventually cost me a lot of time. And hopefully that can help you optimize your learning so that you could learn more and achieve more in less time. Mistake number one is getting too tied up in choosing which tools to use. You've probably read countless blog posts and watched many videos about whether it's better to learn R or Python. Yes, in a way, it might be important to learn exactly the skills that are more in demand and especially if you don't have a lot of time. But other than that, the truth is, no matter what you choose to learn at the start, it doesn't matter in the long run. Programming skill is a highly transferable skill and that means that once you know how to program in one certain language, you can easily apply the concepts and learn another one with just a fraction of the time from learning the first language. And who knows, in your future job, you might be using both languages. But to be honest, I still make this mistake until today and very often fall down the research hole. The other day I was working on a portfolio project for the channel about making an interactive visualization dashboard in Python, which, spoiler alert, will be coming in the next video. I spent a ridiculous amount of hours reading dozens of blog posts about different dashboarding tools in Python and which one should I use for the project. I spent hours just to make the decision of which tool and which library to use. I wish I had spent less time on all the reading and on the research and actually try things out to see how things work and find out which one I like the most and which one actually does the job. Honestly, it's one of the hardest things in data science and I can guarantee that each and every one of us will experience some sort of decision fatigue at some point. There are always so many packages, libraries, new and cool frameworks. There's a lot of distraction and the worst thing is that you will eventually end up doing nothing. From my experience, I think it's better to just try things out. You know, the examples from documentation or from a tutorial, just get your hands dirty and you will get more ideas of whether the tool actually does the job in a way that you like. The second mistake I made is not working on portfolio projects from the start and immediately put what I learned into practice. It doesn't matter how many online courses you have taken or what kind of degrees you have. If you haven't worked on a real-world portfolio project, it's really hard to measure how far you are in terms of your knowledge and skills. I think learning by doing is still by far the best way of learning. Once you start working on a portfolio project, for example, doing exploratory data analysis on a data set, you know, oh, I don't know how to transform the data in this or that format. I got this and that error and I have to look for a solution on Stack Overflow or I don't know how to interpret the correlation matrix or a certain plot. All these little things are easily overlooked if you never actually do them yourself. An excuse I got back then was that I didn't know which project I want to work on or the things that I was interested are not sophisticated enough or it's not worthy to spend and time on, I realized the perfectionism mindset where you try to find the best idea to work on only prevents you from actually doing things. Just start with something small and build it up over time because it's all part of this whole learning curve. I think part of the problem I had back then was also because I used to have a wrong motivation of creating a portfolio project for the sake of the project itself. If I were to go back, I would work on a project because I like it and I could learn something from it, not necessarily having to show it to anyone. So it's a switch from the mindset of focusing solely on the end result to focusing on the learning process, which is much more helpful and fun in my opinion. Another mistake I made is being selfish. Like I learned things just for myself, but I didn't try to share that knowledge with other people. And it turned out that teaching someone is actually the best way to really learn something. Since then, I have started writing on Medium about all the things I found interesting in data science, my experience and all kinds of things in life. And the same thing for this YouTube channel you're watching that I started somewhere last year. Every time I manage to explain something, I feel like I'm finally able to internalize Analyze that knowledge and make it mine. And the best thing is when you actually start working in your job and you have to explain things to your non-technical colleagues and your boss as well. And guess what? You then already know how to communicate and explain things to other people. Okay, you might be thinking, but I just started and have nothing useful to share or nothing to teach others. I used to think the same way, but please keep in mind that there are always people who are one step behind you and could benefit from what you have to say. Actually, they would probably appreciate the teaching 
teaching from you rather than from someone who is already very far ahead because that teaching probably no longer resonates with them. If you just tried this new Python library to do something, write about it. If you just came across a new technique to analyze or visualize data, write about it. Trust me, no one cares what you write on Medium or blogs. If it's a good article, it gets views. If not, it doesn't hurt anybody. The fourth mistake that I made is to learn by myself. I was always alone. My friends were not interested in data science or coding or whatever I was doing. It ended up quite a lonely journey, I would say. I wish I was more active in seeking out the people who would actually want to learn with me and collaborate with me. There are a lot of data science meetups in the city which I could have gone to. There are events and online communities on Kaggle where I could literally pair up with someone to join a Kaggle challenge. I think the loneliness is one of the things that could discourage us along the way and make us want to give up. I'm very grateful now that I've had a sort of community here on YouTube where more than a thousand of you are hopefully enjoying what I'm sharing on the channel. It's also one of the reasons why I take the content suggestions from each and every one of you very seriously. I don't know how long I can keep doing that, but I will try my best. Sorry a bit for the rambling, but the bottom line is never learn alone. You can learn so much faster and effectively if you learn with someone else. The fifth mistake I made is falling down the rabbit hole of online courses and certificates. I used to enroll in a bunch of online courses and ended up not doing them or doing it halfway, watching the lectures in 2x speed. I don't remember most of the things I was learning there. I think in a way, books is a more active way of learning. I think with their science books, you are more likely to get a more detailed and well-rounded background on the things you're learning. And they also introduce more nuances of the concepts, which I often find very useful and interesting. Many books also have the coding repo that you can clone into your computer and take your time to walk through the coding materials. Books is good for learning the fundamental, but the downside is that they are not always up to date and you might not find the latest libraries and frameworks introduced in the books. So I think reading blogs like Medium and actively applying the skills into your data science portfolio project is probably the best way to stay up to date and make up for these downsides. I hope this video helps you learn from my mistake and that you can progress faster in your data science journey. If you need some ideas or inspiration for portfolio projects, check out the data portfolio project playlist on my channel, where I made a tutorial on building unique data portfolio projects in R and Python. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.